okay, let's try to calculate this standard error estimate. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to try to calculate this predicted value and this actual value. I'm going to find the difference. So we're going to focus on the numerator first. So we'll, we, first we need to find our parameters. That is our coefficients and constants. So to do that, we can say results dot params. There we go. So we have our constant and we have our slope coefficient. So let's first take our data frame and we're going to create a new column. I'm going to call it predicted. And that's just going to be equal to our equation. And so we can take our results dot params and we're going to look at the zeroth element here. And remember, we can just add that. Our equation is just that, our coefficient plus beta 1 dot params 1. And we can multiply this by our x variables. And that, again, is just our, take our data frame, and that is just returns on the market, x returns on the market. And so we can run that. There we go. So we have our new column called predicted. And that's just from this equation. The other way we could have done this is we could have actually take it, taken this entire equation here. And instead of writing out the equation like so, we could just say results dot predict. And again, remember we already created an x variable here earlier, right here. So this incorporates our x variable and our constant. So we could just use that and we'll get the same result. See? So let's continue. So we have our predicted column. Now what we like to do is find a residual. So the residual is we're taking returns on Apple, the excess returns, minus our predicted value. We're going to find that residual. So to do that, we're going to create a new column, data frame, and we're going to call this regression residual. And that's just going to be equal to our data frame R minus RF. That's the returns, excess returns on Apple. Minus our data frame column predicted. And so we'll output what that looks like here. And there we go. We have a residual. And of course, there's always a simpler way. We could have actually taken this as well. And instead of subtracting both these columns, we could have took our results dot resid. And that should get the exact same value. There you go. See? So we have that. Now we have a residual. And what we would like to do is we need to, we have the numerator here. What we need to do is we need to square it. So we'd have to square these residuals. So to do that, we're just going to call this data frame and new column. And we're just going to call it squared residuals. And that's just going to be equal to our data frame column re regression residual. And we're going to square it so we can do it like so. There we go. We have our squared residuals. Finally, if you'll notice in our equation, we've squared our residuals here. Well, now we just need to sum. This summation sign saying we need to sum all those squared residuals. So we'll do that next. So we can just take our column, squared residuals, and we can just say dot sum. There we go. So we have the numerator in our function, our standard error of estimate equation. Now we just need to divide it by n minus 2, which are degrees of freedom, and we can find the square root. I also want to add that how similar this equation looks to the standard deviation equation. The only difference is instead of n minus 1 for our standard deviation, we're taking n minus 2. And that's because that's because the sample includes n observations, observations, and the linear regression model estimates two parameters. So the difference between the number of observations and the number of parameters is n minus 2. And so that difference, it's called the degrees of freedom. And that's the denominator that is needed to ensure that the estimated standard error of estimate is unbiased. So that is the reason why. And so we've done that. Now we have the numerator. Now all I have to do is just divide it by n minus 2. And so we know, we know that we can count our squared residuals. So we can say df squared residuals 
not count. That's going to count all the all the values in this column and exclude the not a number of number and minus two. And we can put this in its own parentheses like so. Run that. And then now what I would like to do is just take the square root of this. And so we can say np dot square root because we imported our import our np numpy library. Run that. And there we go. That's our standard error of estimate. And of course, there's always a simple way, simpler way to do this. We can just take our results, results dot, dot scale, and we can find the square root of that. So np dot square root. We should get the same value, and we do get the exact same value. So that's our standard error of estimate. And remember, it, it measures that uncertainty between the actual values and the predicted values. And of course, if we were going to compare this with another regression model, we would look at the standard error of estimate and see how much better or worse the model is predicting the actual value. So if you like this video, please subscribe. In our next video, we're going to go over the coefficient of determination and R squared. So till next time, thank you.